usually we're not one for rehashing things that we talk about because we like to stay in the moment fresh talk about certain things mm-hmm. but we had some unresolved issues about last week okay with a certain wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills okay I think we still need to talk a little bit about John Brown and how his contract affects so many other things around him I thought you were going to say Zay Jones and yes I'm still healing from that It's it's interesting because we just get off the heels of talking about people wanting to extend Josh Allen and how much that would cost. Uh Obviously, you don't have the funds to do that. If you did, I'm just saying if. This is a big if. Uh If you did extend Allen early, Uh you'll have to extend Tremaine early. Yep. Unless you're moving on. I mean... There's, unless there, uh, yeah. unless you're moving on, I'm which saying maybe the, you are. In the scenario where people would really like to have Allen extended, that's John. That's the last domino to fall for John Brown mm-hmm. if he didn't want to restructure. Sure. Yep. And even if he could restructure, he'd probably still be gone. You know what I mean? That's yep. so much money that's allocated to Allen. You would have to cut ties it in certain places. Well, I know there's other places to do it. I mean, John Brown's in an interesting scenario, right? Because he's entering year 31. He's got a high base salary, which you can restructure, right? But the player, one, has to want to restructure. Yes. Two is, if you're John Brown, do you want to restructure? Or do you just say, you know what, just cut me? Because I need to sign a two- to three-year deal somewhere. Because think about it, right? If he restructures, now he's going to hit the market at 32. And he knows he's not going to get re-signed. I know. He know like, it's writings on the wall. He's not going to get a contract well, extension uh, at 32. On the other like, si- I'm just on the other side of this. He does have an injury history. 32 for a receiver is different than 32 for a back. Mm-hmm. Unless your name's Frank Gore and you're a robot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying 32 a receiver isn't the death sentence anymore. I think it's no. 35. Yeah, okay. I'll go with that. Okay, I'll so go with you're, that. But you're, you're, same point. You know, okay, you are now – not saying anything, but I'm not gonna say this about John Brown. But when you're in the in your 32, 33 year, mm-hmm. now you're an emergency pickup if somebody's wide well, receiver. Well, not down. only that, but he's looking at the window of being able to sign a multi-year deal. Mm-hmm. It's 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 closing quick. It's got to right? be two or three. Years, right? That's what I mean. At it's max. Th- this might be his last multi-year deal if the Bills cut him. Right now, the Bills could extend him, and maybe they do. Um, I run into a problem believing that because he and Cole Beasley's contract, as soon as you extend John Brown, now he's gonna, now you're gonna have to say goodbye to Beasley and Brown either in the same season or you have to say goodbye to Beasley first. You're gonna have to make a choice. Exactly. So you're yeah. gonna be in this scenario. You're, Didn't they do that with Hyden Boyer? Uh, Didn't they stagger them initially? They did stagger them initially. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, they did. You mean this organization has a pattern of doing that? <laughs> I think you run into a scenario where Brown might not want to restructure and might say, listen, I know I'm going to get less money, but I'll be 32 and a free agent. If I put up another 40 reception year, I'm a one, one point, I'm veteran minimum. I'm a veteran yeah, minimum yeah, guy on yeah. one year deals. Can I afford to do that? Or should I just sign a multi-year deal for 3 million per season and say, you know what? It's even right. Oh, I mean, and- you, you have to ask yourself those questions. You can't just take it. From the stance of the organization, you have to look at it from the player's perspective. And he's got to look in the mirror and say, how how much longer can I procure a multi-year deal for myself? Uh, if you if well, you restructure with Buffalo, I don't know I don't know how long you can. And we don't know if this season, this pay season, was the one reason why he signed in Buffalo. Maybe this yeah. could have been like okay. But you look at the track record. I, you know, I just want I just want to examine this real quick. John Brown. One of the favorite things that you say all the time, and this is for John Brown and any player in the NFL, is when you take base salary and move it to bonus, players love that. Yeah. Because they get the money right away. Yeah, they get paid. Boom, they get paid just like that. Immediately. That could be something that could fa- favor the Buffalo Bills if they wanted to go that route. And that's sure. fine. You extend him one more year, you prorate some of his base salary to bonus, mm-hmm. and it goes throughout the years, right. and you kind of level it off. Yeah. The thing that's working against John Brown is the fact that the salary cap didn't go up. Mm-hmm. And so that, that probably hurts him a little bit. 
The other thing that we have to take into consideration is after Brown, specifically his position as an X outside, mm -hmm. is concerned. Mm -hmm. After you signed your deal, the Bills traded a first-round pick for Stephon Diggs mm -hmm. and drafted two wide receivers after that. Sure did. Yep. That's The drafting of the two wide receivers is writing on the wall, I think, for Beasley and Brown. But more specifically for Brown, you had a guy – who came in and performed as a rookie fairly well in your position. Right. So. And you gave him the opportunity to play. You did. You did. You know. So that all being intertwined, Brown could look at it as two ways. He could say, listen, I know I'm replaceable in this mm -hmm. offense, mm -hmm. but I want to be here. I think something special is here. I'll extend my deal and, pro and you know spread out my deal. Right. Or I'll be like, listen, you, like you said, if I have another 40-catch season with this team, with only one more year left, I don't know. I don't think the Bills will cut him mm -hmm. because of his importance <clears> to <throat> Diggs. Now, I know you made a point on an episode last week that Brown doesn't pull doubles. I understand that. But yeah. you still got to have a safety over the top sometimes with him. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, I, so, do you think the Bills don't make a decision on John Brown until after the draft? Because remember, they don't need to create this space right now. No, they don't. They just need to create enough space to sign their, their rookies from the draft. That's all they need to do. They mm -hmm. just need to have enough space to be able to sign the rookies. Mm -hmm. That's it. The um, the Buffalo Bills propensity to slide all over the road. It's a Nissan Murano. Oh, my God. It's an all-wheel <laughs> drive. Relax. Um, their propensity. Are they all on the ground? To have... <laughs> oh, the jokes if this is a Kia. <laughs> the Buffalo Bills, for some reason, love insurance policy. Sure. And the fact that Trent Murphy stayed on this team for mm -hmm. about the same amount of money terrifies me. That they're not going to do anything with Brown, even though they have to. Yeah, but don't you think there's a lesson to be learned with Murphy, right? Because that's money you could have rolled over, and he didn't. And aren't you kind of jealous of that eight mil that you could have saved yourself? And wouldn't you want that eight mil now? Like, isn't there kind of a lesson? You didn't to be know about there? Vanessa. You really. You had no oh, I agree. I agree. But you also signed Mario Addison, like. At some point, you have to take a chance. Yeah, I think they, know, they they signed Mario to to spell. I thought they signed Mario to spell Hughes, not not the other side. Mm -hmm. Even though they end up playing him on the other that, side. Yeah, that's not how that works. <laughs> right? Not how not, any of this works. No, that's not how any of this works. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's not how it played out. But but again, I, I think every year you have to look at yourself and look at the lessons that you that you've learned over the years, and I think understanding that rollover cap is is kind of when you can save a dollar i mean you might need to i i don't think anybody could have predicted right again with it with a shortened off season you want as many incumbents as possible you weren't changing coaching staff so again incumbents are important but i i look at this upcoming season for just the wide receiver group in general and i say you've made investments into this wide receiver group now it's time to get return on that investment. Draft capital and yeah. Yeah. You know, and I we're not gonna see Buffalo reinvest into the wide receiver group this year like we did last year. But we might not it see anything happen with Brown until after the draft because you don't you don't need to let him go. You don't need to cut him. You don't need to do any of that stuff. Anything you do is solely to be nice to him. If you release him now, you're just being nice and allowing him to be one of the first people in free agency to go try and get a deal. Yes. If you wait till after the draft that's a little tougher for him. It's, for, it's a harder situation for him to be in. So to wrap this up, I'm thinking we're thinking if you're the Buffalo Bills, you want to extend him to prorate his deal, or you want him to restructure and move some of his base salary to bonus. Correct? Is, yeah. Is that the, so I'm just I, trying I to think for both sides what what could be the options for John Brown at well, this point? Well, and this is this is where restructuring his deal gets a little hard, right? Because the only way to take – because otherwise you're giving a, a pay cut, right? The only way to take money off the table and guarantee that payment is to put it in unlikely to be earned incentives, right? That's the only way to That's save that point. money. So how, do, how does that work? So unlikely to be earned incentives are incentives in your contract, performance bonuses that are stats that you didn't meet the year before, okay? Okay. So John Brown played – caught three touchdown passes last year. So if you put an incentive that every touchdown after the third one is worth so much money, or you give him just a flat bonus oh. for his fourth touchdown, 
that money doesn't count against your current salary cap because he hit that performance last year. They count any bonuses for stats you hit the previous year against salary cap. Gotcha. But if he gets hurt and doesn't catch four touchdown passes, he doesn't get that bonus, so it doesn't count against your salary cap. It works the opposite way, too, that if, if he had performance bonuses that he had hit and then one year doesn't, you get a credit on the next year for that. So, oh, okay. like, it, it's a two-way street, but it's an easy way to renegotiate without taking without asking him to take a pay cut, which is what, if you're Buffalo, you're asking him to do. Like, I ask him to take a pay cut. That's a slippery slope because that's so, that rests solely on players play on the field. Exactly. And not many players do that. Right. They want to protect themselves, especially over age 30. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're a 26 year old Le'Veon Bell, you may take that. Exactly. Right, maybe, yeah, but yeah, I mean, if you're a 32 year old wide receiver playing, you know, pay to play is is kind of not what you want to do. No, it doesn't give you the guarantees that you want. But I don't. I mean, I I don't know how else you rework it unless you're gonna ask him to take a straight pay cut. And sure, you could extend him for a year or two. But I don't know if that's really the situation you want to put yourself in because next year we're gonna have to have the exact same conversation of. How long is John Brown going to be on this football team? I just think for me, for my money, if they don't do anything with him, mm-hmm. it's an $8 million insurance policy on Stephon Diggs. Because if you lose Diggs, the fall off from Diggs to Davis and Diggs to Brown, they, they like insurance policies and they have eaten an $8 million deal before. Okay, well, when, let me. When the cap was rising, I understand. Let me yeah. let me ask um, another question. Do you feel the same way if they were changing offensive coordinators? Do you no. feel the same way? No. Why? Because it's just an unknown. Who knows? You may you may be you may be using Gabriel Davis in a role that John Brown can't play. Even though, I mean, I think right now in the offense that's set up right now, they both can play that role of mm-hmm. the number two, stretching the field in different ways. Right. But well, you bring in a you bring in a purely a West Coast guy or an Eric Coriel guy, who knows what you're going to do? Well, and I think it's I think it's important to look at this off season, right? Because what if you're preparing for life without Dable? Brown Brown fit what Dable wanted to do. Right. Brown has played in multiple offenses. He has played in multiple offenses. But if you're looking at future fitting your team, you look at it and say, listen, Dable's gone next year. So let's just make that transition a little easier. We'll move away from Brown. We'll move to players who could be a little bit more malleable in other systems. Yeah. Because the EP system, and I think this is something that we should probably mention. The EP system, I think, is is a really niche, like it's it's a it's a niche system right yes. it's 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 about skill set it's not necessarily about talent i i hate to phrase it that way but i i don't really know another way to phrase it do you think that if a change in offensive coordinators happened that this wide receiver group would be better off exactly where they are right now or worse off i think it would it would be about the same teetering toward worse okay because you, you you do have to have a specific skill set to play in this offense, mm-hmm. um, in the things that you need to do. But perhaps that's the reason why they went with Stephon Diggs, who is the the I'll, I'll say it he's the best route runner in the NFL. And you got Gabriel Davis and Isaiah Hodges at the time when you drafted them were guys that could play pretty much anywhere over the offense and caught everything. Yeah, yeah, and they're everything. vacuums. They're yeah. vacuums. Yeah, so they're vacuums. Um, and you have a guy in, in Dawson Knox who was trying to progress to that level, even though everyone likes to mention the drops that he has. And they have the, the, drop, the timing of his drops are just atrocious. I understand right. that. But he's a, he's a big – he's like the modern tight end, mm-hmm. you know, in the modern NFL tight end where he's not going to very – he's not going to block very much for you. But you put him in San Francisco or Kansas City, do you think he's, he's, he's a pro bowler? That's a tough call. I don't think so. Right. I mean, I mean, I know does, I'm, does I'm going get, on on a limb he, with Knox, but I, I think he has that talent. In does him. he get different opportunities? Yes. Yes, I agree there. I mean, Brian Dable could be given, you know, the greatest tight end in NFL history, and he just hasn't shown the ability to to really utilize them in the offense. They're they're the fifth best option at all times. You know, like it's they're just they're just always the fifth best option. It doesn't matter who it is. 
And, you know, that begs a question. When you talk about the NFL draft, when you talk about free agency, the tight end room has to improve. I think you need to look at what you're doing with the wide receiver group and make a determination as to what direction are you going to go. You got small. Like, you went small on purpose. You went small because the EP system allowed you to do so, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't need big body guys to run that system. It's yeah. That's not the way that system's run. So what, what decision are you making, right? What are you doing? Are you going to try and move this system forward, getting bigger guys? Or are you going to just keep doing what you've been doing? And I, I don't know if I've got the answer to that. You know, I, I look at Bean, and Bean's not a dummy. And if the wheels completely fall off the bus next year, and the Bills win four football games, is Brian Dable your offensive coordinator? Probably not. If the Bills win 14 football games, is Brian Dable your offensive coordinator? Also, probably, probably not, not. Yeah. right? So at some point, you have to prepare your roster for an eventual change. I, I think leaving John Brown on this football team will open an opportunity when you want to do that. But if you look at somebody and say, this is the guy that, you know, this guy could fit in five different offenses with five different coordinators that are available right now, is he? Is four million dollars to him going to be more valuable than the eight million dollars to John Brown? I mean, it's a tough question to answer. Dude, man, if they believe Dorsey's the OC, not if he gets hired first. <laughs> he's getting he's getting interviews other places, man. Yeah. I, I will rise above, above this. This hell